You are now looking at one of the most innovative solar power plants in the world, launched not in the desert, but floating quietly on a lake in southern Germany. This new installation doesn't sprawl across the ground or tilt toward the sun like traditional solar farms. Instead, it stands tall, rising vertically from the surface of the water like a field of gleaming walls, located in the Bavarian municipality of Gilching. This 1.8 megawatt floating vertical PV system is already making headlines. With that kind of output, it can power more than 500 homes, providing clean electricity directly from a calm quarry lake. By capturing sunlight from both sides of its panels, morning and evening, it can generate more power than conventional flat solar farms. And here's the part that has energy experts paying close attention. This upright design is far more resistant to storms, requires less maintenance, and avoids the overheating that often limits performance on land. Floating on water also helps keep the system naturally cool, further boosting efficiency. For years, engineers have explored ways to push solar energy beyond its traditional limits, higher output, lower land use, and longer lifespan. Most concepts stayed on paper, but here, in a quiet corner of Germany, that vision has become a reality. This project could change how the world builds solar farms, and the machine leading this new chapter isn't a satellite or a massive tower. It's a simple idea, turned brilliant, vertical, floating solar. If you love deep dives into groundbreaking clean tech, make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for more cutting-edge energy stories. Now, to understand why this new installation is creating such a stir, we need to first step back and think about the limits of conventional solar farms. For decades, most solar panels have been laid out flat or tilted at fixed angles, often on rooftops or vast stretches of land. This is a good solution for sunny regions with abundant space, but it comes with hidden problems. Panels get hot, and heat reduces their efficiency. They take up large amounts of valuable land, competing with agriculture, housing, or natural ecosystems, and they are vulnerable to dust, snow accumulation, and strong winds. Traditional floating solar, known as FPV, emerged as a clever alternative by installing solar panels on reservoirs, lakes, and other calm bodies of water developers could save land while taking advantage of water's cooling effect. That alone can boost energy production by 5 to 15 percent compared to land-based systems. But the German project goes a step further by flipping the panels vertically. This vertical orientation is not just a design gimmick. It captures light in the early morning and late afternoon when the sun's rays come in at a low angle these are hours when traditional flat systems don't perform well. It also prevents snow buildup in winter, reduces dirt accumulation, and avoids heat buildup during midday peaks. It's a simple geometric twist that yields a surprising gain in performance and reliability. The floating vertical PV plant in Gilching is developed by Sin Power, a company known for pushing the boundaries of renewable energy on water. The entire system sits on a modular floating platform anchored securely to the bed of the lake. On this platform, vertical rows of solar panels are installed back to back, forming a kind of solar wall that catches sunlight from both directions. This back to back configuration is key. Traditional single sided panels only convert light that hits the front surface. Bifacial panels used in this project can capture light on both the front and the back, boosting total energy output by as much as 20 to 30 percent depending on environmental conditions. Because the panels stand vertically, wind flows more smoothly around them, reducing mechanical stress. This translates to a much higher storm resistance, a critical factor for floating installations that must endure harsh weather without expensive reinforcement. Sin Power's engineering team designed the support structure to handle strong gusts while keeping the platform stable even in turbulent conditions. Another advantage is thermal regulation. 
Panels on land heat up under the sun, losing efficiency as cell temperatures climb. The combination of vertical mounting and constant contact with cooler air above the water surface prevents excessive heating. This passive cooling extends the lifespan of the panels and ensures more consistent energy output throughout the day. With a nameplate capacity of 1.8 megawatts, the Gilching installation is not the largest solar plant in the world, but its output efficiency per square meter is drawing serious attention. Because of its vertical design and the cooling effect of the lake, the system produces significantly more electricity relative to its footprint than conventional arrays of the same size. This installation can provide power for more than 500 average German households annually. But the real achievement lies in its operational profile. Traditional solar farms peak around midday when sunlight is at its strongest, creating what's known as the duck curve, an energy supply mismatch between when power is generated and when it's needed most. Morning and evening hours often rely on other energy sources, including fossil fuels, vertical solar breaks that pattern, because its panels face east and west. Production starts earlier in the day and continues later into the evening. This makes the output curve flatter, more aligned with actual demand, and easier to integrate into the grid. In other words, it produces power when people actually need it. One of the strongest arguments in favor of floating solar is its ecological footprint. Building large solar farms on land often involves clearing agricultural fields or natural habitats. Floating projects avoid that conflict by using underutilized water surfaces. In Germany, quarry lakes are often calm, stable, and ideal for such installations. The vertical configuration adds an extra layer of ecological benefit. Because the panels cast less shadow on the water surface, the impact on aquatic ecosystems is reduced compared to traditional horizontal floating arrays. The water temperature and oxygen levels remain more stable, minimizing disruption to fish and plant life. There's also less maintenance. Dust, dirt, and snow tend to accumulate on flat panels, requiring frequent cleaning and sometimes the use of water or detergents. Vertical panels shed most of these naturally, keeping the surface cleaner and reducing operational costs. Floating solar plants must survive high winds, waves, temperature swings, and storms. Many early pilot projects failed because they underestimated these forces. SinPower approached this differently. Their system uses a flexible but strong floating platform, reinforced anchoring, and aerodynamically optimized panel mounts. Unlike land-based systems, which rely on heavy steel frames and concrete foundations, floating platforms must balance weight, stability, and mobility. SinPower's engineers drew on years of experience from marine energy systems to make sure the platform behaves like a stable vessel, adapting to waves instead of fighting them. During stress tests, the vertical structure proved to have lower wind loads than conventional tilted systems of equivalent capacity. This means it can withstand storms more easily, lowering insurance and reinforcement costs. In regions prone to extreme weather, this is not just a bonus, it's a game changer. When most people think of solar panels, they imagine them tilted at an angle to face the sun. This is ideal at noon, but not throughout the entire day. The sun moves. East and west facing panels capture more energy during morning and evening hours. When many homes and businesses are at their peak demand, the German installation uses a clever strategy. By placing bifacial panels vertically, it faces both east and west simultaneously. This doesn't produce the absolute highest peak output at noon, but it yields a much more balanced energy generation curve across the day. This balanced curve is critical for grid integration. It reduces the need for expensive storage or backup power and makes renewable energy more reliable. This kind of generation profile is exactly what grid operators are looking for as countries shift to higher shares of solar and wind power. Floating PV has been growing rapidly around the world, 
countries like China, Japan, and Singapore have already built large floating solar farms, but most of them use conventional horizontal panel layouts. The German project may signal a new phase in this evolution, showing that vertical floating solar can combine the land-saving benefits of FPV with the production curve advantages of east-west facing systems for countries with limited land but abundant inland water surfaces, such as islands, archipelagos, and nations with hydropower reservoirs, vertical floating solar offers a practical way to expand renewable capacity without encroaching on agriculture or ecosystems. It's also scalable. Modular floating platforms can be added gradually, adapting to local energy needs. One of the big questions with any new renewable technology is cost. Vertical floating solar has some additional engineering complexity, but it also saves on other fronts. Land acquisition is often one of the largest expenses in solar projects. Floating on existing water bodies can eliminate or greatly reduce this cost. Cooling from water also improves the energy yield, meaning more electricity per installed watt. Over the lifetime of the system, this can lower the levelized cost of electricity, making it competitive or even cheaper than conventional ground-mounted systems. The vertical panels also need less cleaning and maintenance, which further reduces operational costs. This combination of lower land costs, better yield, and lower O&M makes the technology financially attractive, particularly for regions where land is scarce or expensive. Of course, no new technology comes without challenges. Vertical floating PV is still a relatively new concept, and large-scale deployment requires rigorous testing under different environmental conditions. Anchoring systems, cable routing, and grid integration must be adapted to floating platforms. There are also regulatory hurdles. Many countries have strict rules for water surface use, and integrating floating solar into existing grid systems can require additional permitting and environmental assessments, ensuring that these installations don't interfere with navigation, recreation, or aquatic ecosystems is essential. But the Gilching project is an important real-world case study. It shows that with careful engineering and environmental planning, vertical floating, PV can work at commercial scale. As the world moves toward decarbonization, solar energy will play an ever larger role, but scaling up traditional solar farms has its limits. Land use, grid integration, and efficiency are real constraints. Technologies like floating solar, and especially vertical floating solar, offer a way to break through those limits. Germany's 1.8 MW project may seem modest in size compared to gigawatt-scale solar farms, but its innovation is what matters. It points toward a future where solar farms don't need vast deserts or wide rooftops. They can float on reservoirs, lakes, or even coastal waters, delivering clean energy while preserving land. This is not just an engineering achievement, it's a new way of thinking about how we integrate renewable energy into our environment. Instead of covering the land with solar panels, we can make use of underutilized water surfaces and smarter panel geometry to achieve the same or even better results. This quiet Bavarian lake is now home to a solar plant that may change the way the world thinks about renewable energy. By standing tall on water, this project captures light more efficiently, withstands storms more gracefully, and delivers power more evenly throughout the day. The concept is simple, but its implications are profound. Imagine thousands of these floating vertical systems deployed across lakes, reservoirs, and coastal areas around the world, supplying clean power without taking up a single square meter of farmland. But many questions remain. How will this technology scale in different climates and environments? Will it truly be cost competitive on a global scale? Can it coexist harmoniously with local ecosystems? And perhaps most intriguingly, could floating vertical solar one day replace vast portions of land-based solar farms entirely? One thing is clear. The Gilching installation is more than just another solar farm. It's a glimpse of a smarter, more flexible, 
and more efficient energy future. A future where the sun's energy is harvested not just across the land but across the water and in ways we hadn't imagined before. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the world's most powerful vertical floating farm, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with others passionate about the future of clean energy. The water is no longer the limit for solar power. It's the power plant of the future.